We are live now. I'm sorry, guys, night. it's a little bit flaky. Oh, it's choppy. Hopefully, that's working out for you, Phil. We are live on the Monday night show. Uh, is that coming through all right, Phil? Hopefully, it comes through okay. I'll introduce the other guys and hopefully the internet clears up for you. Uh, CB, welcome back, mate. How, how was your weekend? Um, I got bashed. I spent a whole Saturday afternoon getting bashed, basically. So, um, had better. <laughs> Had better. Well, very good. Yeah. Oh, you're, here, you're here now. You're here now. And uh, EJ, welcome back to you, mate. Free yeah. Marlon. Very good. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for having me again. Um, my my weekend was very sedate. Uh, I was still isolated from the family at the other end of the house. So more beer, more football. Again, terrible. Jeez. And you're still uh, locked out there in the room. So has, you're back out into a mixed living area now? Yeah, as of today. As of today, okay. Um, yeah, so I've got a long list of things that I need to catch up on. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to do a podcast. <laughs> uh, very good. All right, welcome to everyone else who's joined in. Phil is trying to join us. There's just been some internet connection issues. Uh, so hopefully he'll uh, rejoin us shortly. But um, we don't want to talk about the game too much because we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through all the material. But we'll talk we, about... Uh, I'll go you see me. We didn't, just for the viewers, we didn't really have a plan B if Phil's internet connection was uh, in trouble. So <laughs> we're, we're just sort of waiting. Um, yeah, Phil's just had a couple of uh, technical issues uh, for the people tuning in. So we do apologise. And um, we hope to get him in because there's, there's quite a bit to cover and we're quite excited to have him in tonight. So um, a lot yeah. of questions. Uh, a few questions coming through. Where's Tig? So because uh, he had the week off work from COVID, he's now gone back to work with a heap to do. So he's... Staying back late in the office. Uh, hello, Hugh from Thailand. Thank you for tuning in, mate. Much appreciated. Um, I don't know if we'll cover it later on, but we'll we'll just pad for a bit and talk about the oh, – yes, Phil, I'll try and add him back in. We'll try again. Phil, how are you, mate? Is that working I'm for still... you? Is it uh, working? I can hear you just. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we can. Oh, I'm sure everyone else can as well. Hopefully it's not too crackly. How are you, mate? I just went into the settings to try and fix something, but um, I don't think it's improved things. Oh, okay. Can you hear us any better now? Is that coming through a little bit clearer? You sound like Daleks. Oh, that's not good because you're coming through really clear. You come through really well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Captain Blood is clear, Isabel. Of course I am. Of course I am. You're 100%, 100% clear. Oh, CB, I'll, I'll just say an introduction quickly and you can and you can take it away. You're clear, uh, you're like, clear now. Yeah. So my oh, one's coming Is it Elton? Good. Yeah, Elton John's. Yeah, Elton. You <laughs> yeah, you're all good now. Am I, am I all good or is mine still fuzzy? No, nah, mine's the worst one, isn't it? It's Michael's. <laughs> Is it, maybe it's the headset. Um, I'll, I'll just do an introduction quickly. If everyone else can hear me, okay. I'll just int- introduce and CB. You can uh, you can do bulk talking. So, welcome Phil to the show. Played 125 games, kicked 117 goals. An absolute pleasure to have him on. CB, take it away because uh, it's no use me speaking. <laughs> Rightio, Phil. Um, firstly, fantastic to have you on. Um, Mate, just uh, for our audience, what are you what are you currently up to? What are, what are you doing with yourself these days? I I'm an education and community development consultant, um, and I do a lot of weird things. I've built uh, what two acres in Trenton and built a shipping container complex, and oh, yeah. uh, running it out on B and B, and it's going really well so far. That's Look after two um, snow-nosed grandkids, grandsons, five yeah. and seven. It's funny the um, container things. I actually Very deal with. Uh, I've dealt with previously with a mob that were they were building, they were converting shipping containers into uh, recovery facilities to help addicts out in the city. So it's it's amazing this modular um, construction. It's 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 quite bigger than people think. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and. On a side note, uh, Craig Lambert gave us a glowing endorsement of yourself and said that you, you always had heaps of time for the young lads 
that come through and it gave them great confidence in coming to such a big club with such a big history. And he mentioned that you're a bit of a practical joker as well. When uh, times were tough, you you were keeping the spirits up. Is that true or false? Who, who, who was that again? Craig Lambert. Who would say that? Craig, Craig, Craig Lambert. Lambert said that one. Oh, Lemmy. <laughs> Craig Lambert. He's a um, fantastic fella. We catch up a little bit, um, mainly after games and out at the MCG, after – Big sessions at the three one two one room where Flea runs them, and um, every well over the last few years when he was with the Giants, uh, we would always catch up. Very funny fella. No, I wasn't a practical joker. He's just throwing off from himself. Oh, there, <laughs> it, is. I, um, there it is. <laughs> no, no, no. He was uh, no, very, very, very good man, Lamy. Right, so. So, Edge, I might get you to throw off the first couple of questions, if you like, mate, and um, take it from there. Rightio. So we go back to the start. How did you end up at Richmond? Um, I think you were in our recruiting zone. Is that right? Um, and maybe for the young blokes that uh, are out there that don't quite remember, how did it work back in the day as far as getting picked up with the zones and stuff like that? Hold it up and I'll run with it. <laughs> Hold up something, write it down, because I'm not hearing you real good. It goes oh, in and out. Okay. So, 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 Phil, can you hear me? Phil, can you hear me clearly now? No, that one's not coming through either. Oh, he's uh, frozen. <sighs> <laughs> Right when we don't want it to freeze. The only thing <laughs> I can think of, only thing I can think of doing, I can try and text him the questions as we go. Maybe do that. Maybe screenshot, send him the questions, and then we'll just get into the game review, and then come back. Yeah, we'll try again. We'll try again. Is it? Oh, I've got you clear. Can you hear me now, or am I still no good? I'll still. Uh, you see me? You try. <laughs> Check one two, Phil. Check one two. That's a bit flaky. Sorry, but I don't know what's wrong. I'm sitting right next to the internet dongle. The internet's a little bit flaky in Trentham. Um, I'm living on two acres, tree tree two acre lot, and it's you know it's uh, not a real good day outside. So it is a bit rough. We can keep trying, I guess. I don't know. So, yeah. so, so the question was asked, Phil. If you can hear me, um, how did you end up at Richmond? Were were you in our recruiting zone? No, that's gone as well. I can try calling him and putting on speaker. Maybe, maybe we hold. Uh, we might have to hold off till it's a bit better. We can't keep going on and off. That's a problem. This is like a bad episode of Frontline. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you want me to try calling him and see if we can just do it through audio, or is that oh, that look a bit? Oh, I reckon we try again another day. <laughs> yeah, let's start to see how we can get it to work tonight. Unfortunately, because the weather is bad outside as well. It's just not. Yeah, conducive. it's uh, yeah. Hang on, oh. All right, I feel we'll, we'll start. Bed to burn, Phil. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll start talking about the game quickly. So. And I'll try and do some troubleshooting in, in the background just so we can get stuck into it. Uh, Richmond, 17-15-115. Defeated Hawthorne, 14-10-94 by 23 points. Lynchy kicked four. Dusty, three. Rewalt, three. Bolton, two. Soldo, two. Castagna, Graham, Nankervis, all with one each, boys. Uh, CB, you can go first. What's What did you make of the game? A pressure game returned. Obviously, the, the first quarter and... Into the, into the second quarter, um, Hawks had our measure. But then beyond that point, um, our pressure took over. I think we were over 200 on the pressure index for the rest of the game. And um, pressure pressure is king. And that is where we absolutely nutted the um, Hawks on the weekend, which created our scoring opportunities and saw us win the game. EJ? Yeah. Um, I was a bit disappointed 
uh, in the last quarter when we dropped away. Because I think we were, I think what you're saying is right. We were over 200 for the for the whole second half up until that point where they just went whack, whack, whack. And that's been a couple of times now because it happened against Collingwood as well where we've just taken the foot off the gas for a bit and it's a bad habit and it's not something I want to see on a regular basis. Um, the pleasing thing about that game two weeks ago with West Coast was we kept our foot to the floor the whole way. The last two weeks we've had those little patches where we've got to be comfortable with ourselves and we've let the other team back in. If we do that against a good side, it could come back to bite us. Yeah, well, the good news is we haven't got a good team coming up against us next weekend, but we'll get into that a bit later. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's the I old time like we want. I set them up, you knock them down. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I mean, some, some talking points we've got. Uh, if you want to... How'd you read Nankervis's game, uh, Chris? Uh, I missed 95% of the game because I was out and about. But um, from what I was hearing on radio, he was absolutely dominating. Uh, I think he kicked some miraculous goal that I'm still yet to see, but uh, the commentators were just completely gobsmacked by. So looking forward to catching that. But looking at the, the stat line, it was it read like a typical Nankervis game where he was doing everything from top to bottom. And as we all know, when he plays as that secondary midfielder and bus packs and... Uh, going forward kicking goals we're a much better side so i'll pause there quickly i've asked phil to join but just audio no camera because that might help with the bandwidth situation if we can at least get audio going that's better than uh better than nothing so we'll see how that goes phil has that worked any better with just audio yeah can you hear us there phil has that worked with just the audio setting CB, Hello. you try. Hello, Hello oh, you got you there. No, I, unfortunately, I just don't think it's going to happen. No. Now, can you hear us there, Phil? No, don't reckon it's working. No. Damn, no. internet issues. Sorry, folks. It's just internet issues uh, is just causing a bit of havoc with uh, with Phil. Well, well, maybe maybe if um, we can tidy it up for next week, he can do um, the uh, the look back at the Dreamtime game. We'll yeah, we'll yeah. we'll work something out. We'll have to work something. Out. That's it. Down line. Phil, we want you back. If you're watching, we want you back, Phil. Um, for sure, we've we so got a lot of things to talk about. We are so pumped. A lot of things to talk about. Yeah. Um, so I guess with Nan Curvis, uh, great game, 20 disposals, five tackles, 35 hitouts, one goal, eight clearances from the big man. 15 um, contested possessions. Yep. How many contested possessions? 15, our most comfortably. This is He's a big man, man doing beautiful things. I'll let EJ, I'm going to let you talk about Dustin Martin, who had uh, 20 disposals, four clearances. Three goals at 80% disposal efficiency. How did you read Dusty's game? Um, I thought he stepped up when he needed to. I think there was a little bit of second game sort of... He wasn't 100%, but I reckon that second week back now, uh, there were good flashes in parts. Uh, what I love, and I noted this on the weekend when I was watching... You take, we've got Dusty and, you know, everyone talks about danger and stuff like that. What I love about Dusty is he's always looking for his teammates. Yep. He's a very inclusive player, whereas danger just says, oh, I'll do what I do. I saw those traits again. I, and I, I think Dusty, whilst having a good game, is primed for this week. Yep. And Michaels will talk about the great man. Uh, once again, another another feast in front of the sticks. Big Tom Lynch, four snags and a straight elbow. <laughs> <laughs> it was Better just getting out of the tackle. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah it, he's in a purple patch, isn't he, Tommy? He, he's ripping form. I'm not sure what he's leading the common by now, but you have to laugh that, you know, despite how good of form he's in, 
uh, old mate Robbo does always try and find a way to bring him down and, uh, and undo everything with some media hyperbole bullshit, but that's just how he rolls, I guess. I mean, look, he, he copped impy with the elbow, but I don't think there was any intense malice or anything in it. It was just a bit of a shit happens thing. But um, I, I think we can all agree that the fact he's a lot more mobile now, moving around is the key to his game going to another level. Um, because far too often in the first part of the season, he'd stand there with the hands, you know, above his head, just wanting it kicked nice and high, and doesn't always work against uh, opposition who can just peel off and chop off. But uh, he, he's had a pretty good two or three weeks of footy. And let's talk about the elephant. Let's just get it out of the way now. So Lynch and EJ and I discussed this. We thought Lynch's that was a fifty-fifty, just given the nature of the MRP and everything else. Right, I I could see how he'd get off. I could see he would. Get off and I would see how he would uh, get suspended for a week. Uh, chips fell our way, which is fantastic. But shall we talk about the garbage, the utter sheer garbage of Marlon getting a week? How can you get a week for a football action? And the guy played the game out, yet Rioli can knock out Rao and get nothing. Higgins gets knocked out on the weekend and gets nothing. How does Marlon get a week for that? Explain it to me, please. When I saw that a player was being cited or charged, uh, I know I didn't see a lot of the game, but from what I saw, I was struggling to work out what it was. I really thought it was going to be the Lynch situation. That probably made the most sense to me. And then I had to keep watching the footage over and over and over to try and understand what had happened. So he got, who was it? Someone in the media, it might have been Sam Edmund, or someone was saying that he hit him flush in the draw, according to the vision that Chris O had, which which was a bit more front on, which was better than some of the initial footage. But as people have said, if Pickett had hit him flush on the draw with his shoulder, he wouldn't have got up. He would have been knocked down, and and Pickett then would have deserved three, four, five games, whatever it might have been, for being dangerous. But I just find it hard to believe that he hit him that hard in the head when Moore bounced back up straight away and carried on, EJ. I mean, he might just have a rock-solid draw, you know, but it just feels like if someone was hit that hard, it wouldn't have got back up straight away. Oh, look, I, I'm, I actually struggle to talk about it. Uh, it was the perfect hip and shoulder. And if you watch the that, that front on vision, you can see that at the last moment, more is starting to dip. Even taking that into account, it's the shoulder is contact and then there's the whiplash of the head action. I think... Someone explained it. Apparently, they've taken low impact out this year, and that's why it's a week. So it was low impact, as in he got up, dusted himself off, and joined and joined the game straight away, right? There was no time off. There was no trainer coming out to help him. There was none of that. But they've removed low impact because it's got something to do with the link to potential to cause serious injury, and that is their justification for being a medium impact as a minimum, which therefore automatically with a high contact elevates it to a week. Okay. I hear what you're saying. I don't believe a word. Yeah. <laughs> so you're I'm, just I'm saying, you're just stating the rule. I'm yeah. pointing at you. I'm pointing at you, guy. Right. So I'm just saying, so you explain it to us like that, and yet yep. how do other people not get suspended and they pluck that one out? Like Chuck Lotto, they just spin the wheel, you reckon, or what? I have absolutely no idea. Well, looking at the, I know you mentioned it, the Jack Higgins one, like Holla Jasny knocked him out. Like, are they looking at the end result? Are they looking at the intent? I mean, I don't know. The fact that it's now automatically graded as medium and automatically a week, no matter what the actual outcome is, just seems a bit ridiculous. And for those Um, people out there saying it's some sort of conspiracy against Richmond, it's not. Because if it was, Lynch, Lynch would have got a week. It's just, yeah. it's just MRP lotto. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, they had a board. 50% was Marlon, 50% was Tom. They spun it. <laughs> just landed on Marlon. I guess the only way Lynch avoided it. 
just um, for those who have tuned in, I do understand that the title for this show is uh, with Phil Egan as a special guest. So we do apologise. There has been some internet issues for Phil. He sent me an email saying he's so sorry. Um, he's going to definitely try again sooner and get into a, a better location with, with the internet. He's really looking forward to chatting with us and the audience as well. So we do apologise for the internet issues, but we will definitely get Phil on uh, in the very, very near future because there's plenty of things to talk about with the great man. Uh, it's just a shame. It's such a perfect round for him to be on, but um, hopefully we can try and organise something for, for Monday night to talk about hopefully a win. Absolutely. Sorry, go ahead, CB. And Phil's story still feels story, so there's still some wonderful things for our, oh, our audience to um, listen questions to. For days. Questions Appreciate for days. Questions for days. Actually, there was. We had, for the people, we had to trim a lot of shit back. There was a lot of things to talk about tonight. Um, um, so back on to the other things. Um, uh, Daniel uh, Bolton, 20 disposals, four clearances, seven tackles, two goals at 55% DE, but 422 metres gained. Elton John's wig, take it away. Oh, I didn't really have Bolton down in my top sort of four or five. So if you think you've got... Um, stuff to say there, fantastic. I, I had other people's names down to talk about, to be honest. Um, it seemed like he was a bit cold in the first half when the heat was on from there. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I just, I, it was an okay game, but it just wasn't. I think we, a lot of us were just okay on the weekend. Um, I thought there was a couple of uns, unsung heroes, but what, what did you like about his game, CB? I thought it, the funny thing was I, I thought he got better as the game went on. He wasn't his characteristics. He, had, he wasn't like he was the last month, but as the game yeah. went on, um, cream always rises to the top. So I thought, yeah, I, I thought he got better as the game went on, but uh, he certainly was a little bit fumbly at the start. But um, even then, a fumbly Bolton still better than 80 percent of the rest of the competition at this point in time. <laughs> like the kid is flying, absolutely flying. Um, the other one I had down to discuss was Daniel Rioli. At 24 disposals, 79% disposal efficiency, eight score involvements at 409 metres. Who wants to take that one? When's the last time, and this will be one for EJ potentially, he's the stats man, when's the last time Rioli went under 75%? He's just been... Since, since I've started making an appearance, I don't think there has been a week where he's gone under 75 Ah, and I know, and I, and I know elite. before, and I know before this week, what did he go out this week? So he went at um, yeah, seventy nine percent DE. Oh, that's below his yearly average. He was going; he's been going at about eighty six percent before this week, the, before the weekend. So that might have brought it down to eighty four, eighty three. His disposal this year's been insane. It's yes, uh, excellent. He's got so the confidence. Average. Now he believes, like he, he now understands and knows he belongs in that part of the ground and is backing himself at every opportunity, which is exactly what we need. He actually really looks like a leader now. When you know he's he's putting other people in places, he's going to the spot because he knows he has to. He actually, as you say, it goes with confidence. He know he looks like he knows exactly what he's doing all the time. I. Yeah, actually, it's a good question you asked. Actually, with that disposal efficiency, and I and I do remember writing it down last week. He he, I know a lot of people from other clubs don't want to hear this, but he should be in the AA squad of forty right now if they were yes. going to announce it. Yes, and I know a lot of I know a lot of other people say, "Oh, he's done this." Yeah. You're not watching. He's a different player this year. Yeah. Well, he does the two most important things on their own merits. He defends one on one very well, doesn't often lose a contest, and he is an offensive weapon. So, tick tick, um, and he's doing it consistently. The the important yeah. part. It's not one week here or there. He's doing it week in, week out, which is um, I, I'm so happy for him because the, he was probably on the outer a little bit after coming back from the foot injury and was struggling to recapture that form. Um, but he is now settled in perfectly. And. Michaels, while you're on a roll, the inclusions of Prestia and Nick Vloston, what does that can't mean be, to our team? Can't be understated. Uh, the way those two settle the side, 
We all know it. Uh, Prestia just working like Lostin. I think Lostin was really important on the back of Gibkiss being out as well with uh, Big Kinu, and who we'll touch on later. Just with his first game, just having a bit more leadership down and composure. Um, we just need him to stay in the team for prolonged periods of time to to get that momentum going. And, and that's probably the concern with Prestia. Um, but you wouldn't be against managing him a couple of times as well just to make sure that, that he gets to play you know, if we're cementing ourselves in the top eight, we need him towards the pointy end. We need both of them uh, fit and firing. Can I give a shout out to, we, I don't know if you were going to mention it, but Jack Rewell is now outright second for games played at the Tigers, which is a fantastic effort from Jack Rewell. He's been an awesome servant of the club. Kick three goals. Um, still doing his job, CB. He, I tell you what, old Benjamin Button. It's uh, Benjamin. There's a lot of people trying to retire him off. Like PJ Swig, um, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying that he uh, look. He, I think he's he's top twenty in the in the overall league goal scoring skill. So Richmond in the top twenty's got, uh, I think Shay Bolton. You got Lynch at the top. Then Bolton's our next best goal scorer. Then Jack. Um, he's having a tr- tremendous year for a gentleman of his age and vintage. And um, yeah, look looking. His work, his work with uh, his work with Tom's getting better and better each week. Was very good, happy. I knew yeah, that was both. Yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> but, but what we were talking about, too, which sorry, you go. Oh, we, we're just talking quickly with Jack. Yep. He really taught Granger Barras a lesson on the weekend about footy smarts because he lost Granger Barras uh, with movement so many times it wasn't funny. Yeah. I really noticed that actually. So he didn't oh, – what, did he kick three three goals? He kicked three goals, but he really disrupted their setup by just absolutely losing his opponent. And I yeah. think I think Granger Barras is going to be a nice player. So I think he would have learnt a lot on the weekend – actually having to stand Jack for the day. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll do our ins and outs and then we'll go to another little quick topic. So uh, well, who you got your ins and outs for this week? No, no, there's a couple of stats I wanted to touch on quickly for this game, which I think I was did. the most telling part of the game. <laughs> I did bold it as well, CB, might I add. Uh, the tackle count, 75 tackles we laid. Our 2022 average, 46.1. And then the tackles inside 50, 17, and our 2022 average is 7.8. That yep. That's the difference right there in our form turning around. And I know we did kind of drop off the pace a little bit in that last quarter, but the, it then kind of felt like the Richmond of the last few years uh, where when needed, we found that extra gear to go bang, bang, and put it back beyond doubt, which I don't like seeing, if I'm honest. I'd rather put the foot on the throat and carry on with it. Um, but those tackle numbers and the tackle inside 50 numbers – uh, largely thanks to Morris Jr. And I know people, Georgie's got his uh, haters and lovers, but it feels like, we've said it the last few weeks, it feels like the balance is finally right in that forward half with the output we need from all those players. Yeah, I think what would have been interesting to see is what was our tackle count uh, about halfway through the, up to halfway through the second <laughs> and then see what it was for the rest of the game when we decided to turn up. Um, but you're right, that, that was... Um, a ma- locking that ball in and a massive contributor as to our pressure ratings being over 200. We smashed him. Smashed him. That's the Richmond the Richmond man brand of football, if we can call it that. It was um, it was nice to see. It was, and it, what, what I'm finding interesting is people are obviously jumping on George's back for his performances and based on low statistical numbers. But then you look at Rioli Jr. I'm not knocking Rioli Jr., but very similar stat line, but is getting heaps of praise. I think they're both doing their respective pressure roles very well. And as long as, as a team, we're scoring more than the opposition, I'm okay with George maybe not kicking three or four goals a game. But I understand the need to have a better input too. But it's just an interesting little comparison. He's pointing. He's pointing. I'm just going to say this. Fantasy football and all that utter shit like Supercoach, it has rotted people's brains. And they now get caught up on bullshit stats. Mate, I'll tell you the reason. For all you George haters and knobheads out there, I'll tell you why he keeps getting selected each week. 
because he does his goddamn role and his role isn't there to rack up X amount of possessions and do what have you. He is in that team because he is executing to the coach's satisfaction what he needs to do. And while he continues to do it, get used to seeing George Castagna in that frigging team until he gets knocked out or injured. He's a lock. So get over yourselves. Rant over. The future is now, man. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we'll push on to – we'll do the – we'll do the. I suppose the preview of the Essendon game. But no, while we're doing no, no, that – No, we're not. No, we're not. No, no we're not. We're okay. going to do something else first. First of all, we're going to talk about something we didn't talk about last week. Okay. We're going to talk about Josh Caddy and his retirement. And um, EJ, lead us off about Josh and his retirement. Um, and uh, one of the great shit talkers of all time. I'll never forget. Oh, there's a lots of to- lots of sprays that you remember, but in the uh, grand final when Jack has kicked that goal and it's gone through low, and there wasn't a player on the line for Adelaide, and I don't know, I can't remember who the defender was. Um, I don't know if it was Kelly or whatever it was. But Caddy's run over and he's just gobbing off to him over the goal line, you know, always in their face. But a really good structural player. And if you were lucky enough to see him in 2017, 2018, his impact off the ball in our setup in that forward 50 was unbelievable. He was a battering ram. He used to create space. He was actually smart uh, and he was a competitive beast. The game sort of went past him, but. Uh, he was a big part of uh, us from 2017-2019. There were what he was. What did he kick? How many goals did he kick in 2017? Nah, 2018 he kicked um, 40, 40, yeah. 45 or something. Was it? Was... Yeah. He was a very good player, and it, and it, I love it, I love elite trash talkers. I'm a big fan of that. So, yeah. Seventy nine yeah. games, eighty eight goals, two premierships. Um, he was the perfect jigsaw fitting piece to our puzzle at that point in time to to get us to where we are. And even up until last year, CB, I still thought he had a spot in the side, to be honest, as that that third Same. board. Um, you know, Massive. the higher ups know better than us, but it, it felt like it was a couple of missed opportunities for him. But and I think it, it can't be understated the how selfless the act is to retire now, knowing with the mid season draft upon us, similar to what Griggy did a few years ago. Um, it just kind of shows the character of Caddy and his love for the club, I guess. Yep, absolutely, mate. Um, we we got to remember, like when he when he first turned up, we, we weren't the hardest team going around, and um, when he turned up, he put us. He he was one of the main reasons we got a bit of a steel edge to us um, that 2017 um, season. And there's no doubt, and I'll always be forever grateful that we got him because big part in those two flags and. Uh, I reckon, in a way, he owned our balls, team balls, for a while because uh, when he was out there, we definitely walked a little bit taller. And um, nothing but respect for Josh Caddy and what he did for our club, and nothing but respect for the way that he's exited the um, playing arena um, to free up and give someone else an opportunity. That says everything about the man and says everything about the club currently. I think it's safe to say that if he's at a, a bar or a pub in Richmond, he'll never have to buy himself a beer. I think the Tiger Faith will completely recognise the contribution he's made to our club um, and what he did for us and will always be forever thankful. So thank you, Josh Caddy, for your services and, and all the best to you in retirement. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, three, two, ones, boys. Let's go. Who's going first? I'll go first. Go. Nank, three votes. We've talked about him. We don't need to expand on it. Liam Baker, two votes. Ooh, hello. This is the one that I wanted to talk about. Team high, 14 intercepts. Second for contestant possessions with 12. 28 disposals. He was third in pressure acts with 20. It was one of those games that you don't really notice until you do. Um, Him going back has been... Fantastic for us, and uh, I really, really liked his game when I watched it on replay. And um, one to Prestia, uh, 
He's the best two-way runner at the club alongside Lambert. That really has made a difference. But what I love is he's really clean on the inside and he makes good decisions. Um, a very welcome return. Yep. Michaels? Uh, three, Nank. Just uh, you don't want to use the term captain's performance uh, too often, but he seems to be lifting when we need him to lift. Tommy Lynch, four, four goals. Um, I feel I honestly feel bad for Lynch because he's missed out on so many votes on this show because other people have had blinders the weeks he's kicked big bags. You almost feel like we have to get him in there somehow. Uh, and Prestia just due to the sheer importance he has in this side and how we play football. Very good. See, um, uh, see me. Yeah, three votes. Nank the tank. So he's got a perfect. He's got a perfect. Um, perfect set this week. So the big fella. Two. I'm going for the human meatball. I am going for Dion Prestia just because of his. Uh, as for reasons already said, his uh, his importance to our midfield and his two way running. Um, magnificent footballer. And I'm giving one to Big Tommy Lynch because the big guys need love too. And um, He's just smashed them through at the moment. He's clunking them. And I can't wait for him to feast on that sad shithole club Essendon <laughs> this weekend. I, I'm so excited what he's going to do to their defence, but we'll talk about it a little bit later. No, well deserved for, for Lynchy. I just want to recap again for those who have just joined us. Phil was having just some internet issues. So unfortunately, he hasn't been able to join us tonight, but we are committing to get him back on hopefully next week. Uh, he does send his, his uh, sincere apologies, but we will try again. Uh, before we push on, Biggie Newen, fellas, made his debut uh, in the back line, and I think it was a very well-deserved debut after all the hard work that he's done. He's probably one of those players that won't get much knowledge, like recognition or uh, comments from opposition supporters, but when you sort of hear the stories from within the club about how hard he has worked, he's always asking to be put up against Lynch and Rewald in training drills and exercises to, to really learn against the best in the game just to further develop himself. Um, I'm really wrapped for him that he got a game. Uh, it's always a tough gig playing your first game as a, you know, as a tall. But I thought he didn't do didn't do too bad. And I'm not sure whether we get another gig this week just with Bolter uh, going down. Committed. As he's he committed. Okay, okay, that's good because I wasn't sure with Bolter being out um, if that maybe changed things a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, how did you guys see his game? I thought he looked to to, to be fair. Um, I think he looked a little bit out of his depth, but look, you, you start somewhere. That's his baseline, right? Um, I thought he got towed up uh, in, in quite a few contests, but again, the only way you're going to learn and improve is being put in that situation. So he will only get better for that performance. And um, good luck to the lad. I mean, nothing but love here. So yeah, good luck to him. And hope hope he goes well next weekend. Yeah, I I agree. I thought he was a little bit shaky. But what I will say is when he did get possession, I noticed that he didn't panic. He took the time. Like, he was in traffic. That first possession he got, (coughs) he was in traffic. He looked this way, that way. He made the right decisions. Um, I thought the highlight was uh, – and and – I think I think medium term. I think he'll be okay for us. I think you know he'll be good. Um, the the interview with his sister before the game was magnificent. If you get a chance to watch that back, um, that whole family story is amazing. She's a really high profile. Uh, I think she's a human rights lawyer or something. Like she's she's quite a big thing. Um, that whole interview and the family up in the stands and stuff like that. It was just a, a great story for the club. Nah, good on him, and uh, I'm kind of glad that Dim is committed to having another week with him in the side just for his confidence. So Gibkiss will come back, obviously, as well, which will add a bit more support down there for him too, which is good. Uh, I did so, see a comment up here earlier that we, we did miss mentioning Dusty's goal. What a just <coughs> freak of a player, Dusty. Just sharked that from absolutely nowhere. Had no right to kick that, uh, but he's starting to... He's, he's getting rid of that rust CB. He's just easing back into it nicely. While mate, also talking to Sydney, apparently, if you believe certain uh, people in the media. Mate, don't, mate, I'll rage. Don't, let's, let's not even go down. When, we, when this show starts talking about Tony Sheen articles and Spider Everett, 
I'm done. So he did spider to Everett after Gale's out, did he? I mean, what the hell are we doing? If, if, if that's the quality of where we're at with journalism, then shoot me now, right? I'll start writing columns and posting them. I bet you I'll make more friggin' sense than those peanuts. Um, what's that? Peggy said that she spoke to Dusty and Dusty says it was saying, I believe Peggy before I believe those two. I thought, what would Peggy and Barmy know? Seriously, mate. Tom Tom <laughs> Brown's got sources. So, come on, mate. You're taking the raw prawn, eh? <laughs> but no, look, um, Dusty, I mean, he does that shit for fun, doesn't he? He just... He's a joy to watch. And yeah. more importantly, it still looks like he's having fun and enjoying enjoying himself, which is the most important aspect out of the whole thing. Football to one side. If he's in a good headspace and he, he's having fun again, uh, that's the most important part. Yeah, correct, correct. And and um, so so your outs and ins, Michaels, who are you going with? So what are you saying for this weekend? Well, Bolt is obviously going to be out with that hamstring injury, which is really unfortunate because he's found himself playing really well down back. Um, so I think Gibkiss will come straight in for him. Pickett, I mean, at the moment, we're saying is out, but fingers crossed the uh, Richmond hierarchy do a good job and get it overturned and he plays. But if he comes out, it could be a bit of shuffling at deck chairs. I would anticipate Edwards would come back in officially after he come on as sub. Um, didn't do too bad. And someone like Stack or Cumberland might get a go in the sub vest, potentially. BJ? Um, there's doubts on Jack Graham uh, on the news tonight. He was actually limping quite badly with a toe. Uh, and Soldo went for scans as well. We know Boulder's out. <laughs> Thanks, Bogo. <laughs> um, with big two-metre Peter... Do we? Who do we think is going to stand him? I think we'll just drop a ruckman back in front of him, like with that did Hawkins a couple of years ago. I think there will just be a big unit in the hole blocking his run. Because that that the only the only the only sort of thought I had, um, and yeah, and that's I had that down. If Pickett is out, I'd say Hugo might be a chance. But is this a fit for purpose? Tarrant is a big body, a one match special. Because it's two metre Peter. How no, would Ben I, Miller go? I had Miller down. I had Tarrant slash Miller. Exactly that. I think Miller would go all right. Because I agree with you with the Peter Wright matchup. I think Gibkiss is going to get pushed out the way far too easily. Grimes probably isn't the right matchup. Broad's going to be too short despite his best efforts to yeah. play tall. Yeah. But CB might be closest to the pin with it being a, a team defence kind of situation to curb yeah. him. Because, like, He's in good form as well. Like it's not yes. like he's been playing yes. shit. He's, he's actually he's in one of the most accurate forwards in the last four or five weeks. So CB's got a slam. He's smiling. Yeah, I know. He's he's. It's <laughs> like he set us up for something here. <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm just agreeing with the fact that I'm right. It's going to be team defence, right? So, um, I I think so. I reckon uh, Bolter, yes. And we'll assume that Pickett is out, suspended, even though it's total bullshit. All right. But we're past that now. Um, Gibb just comes in for sure. And believe it or not, I've got Jack Ross coming in because Jack Ross, be quiet, AJ. I know you're going to start raging here. Ross has played on the wing uh, for a few games this year and has racked up quite a bit of ball. So I think they'll go, yep. All right, Ross will come in for the wing. I think Edwards will stay sub. And yeah, I think Gibkiss in. I think it'll be we too can't into play it. Ross on the wing. Can't play Ross on a wing. He's too bloody slow. I'm just telling you what they've done for the year and what they have done previously. And I'm going with what they have already done. I, I'm hoping hate. stack it's a game. It's going to be an interesting selection. I didn't mind the Hugo call for for the wing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Edwards might find his way back in. It's. Um, it, especially being the Dreamtime game as well. I think Edwards will want to perform well for this kind of game. And I feel like it obviously means a lot to him and you would expect a pretty big output from him. So I'd be happy for him to to not have the sub vest on uh, and come in for, for Pickett if that was an easy change. Uh, Parker, that's another one. Kano plays a wing. Not sure how he fared in the VFL, but 
we just got to make sure whatever we do on that wing, we've got to keep the leg speed and the two-way running. Because once yeah, well, we remove that, the whole setup fails because Camden can do one side, but ha- our biggest strength is having two wingers who, who can do that all day. Well, if Shedder, Shedder comes in, then Ross will be the sub. Let's see how close to the pin I am. Potentially. I don't, I don't think he's a good sub. Jack Ross, he just, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I know. I, I know. I know. You're hating on me tonight. You're hating on <laughs> I'm me. I'm not, I'm no, no, not hating. Not hating. Um, oh, yeah, that's, so, that's, that's, why I like Hugh, that's why I like Hugo for the wing because he's got that two way speed um, mm. more so than, than Ross. Um, <laughs> he's got, you know, and. And he's probably got more discipline than what a stack would have. Part of me would like to see stack play because I think he would really rise to the occasion. But I think the professional selection would be Hugo if Pickett misses. Yeah, yeah. Well, on to this weekend. So uh, let's talk about some matchups. So we all know that Tom Lynch is just basically bitching the competition. Just call it as it is, boys. All right. Um, who, 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 who has and got? Uh, in their A-grade defence that Dodoro has set up since 2004, who have they got to um, stop him? Who's going to who's gonna stop him? No one. I think Jordan Ridley's going to have a crack. Not sure how that will eventuate for him. Uh, similar to the two-metre Peter problem, I think that their best chance of stopping Lynch is team defence. And I don't know whether that means flooding back uh, or what it is, but if they, if, if our mids get on top and get remotely half decent ball use uh lynch is going to tear this kid apart unfortunately for him and it's it's because rewalt's in good form too let's not forget that if rewalt wasn't as dangerous as he still is this wouldn't be an issue that you'd be able to double team and, and pan off and and take lynch out of the equation but i don't know how they're going to stop both of them cb yeah correct i mean let's face it they can't stop it and ej i'm already thinking about our multi for this weekend mate and i'm going to tom lynch Three goals. Um, <laughs> Someone said to bring Rance in. To yeah, that's him. a good call, Drew. Oh. That's a really good call. That's <laughs> yeah, why they right. got him in. That's why they tried to sign him up, I reckon, just to play a final game. It's a good point. Yeah, look, yeah. I, I actually, you know, Ridley's quite a nice player, right? But, no, he's, he's, a nice, he's, he's not a bad player. He's nice. Right? No, he's nice. He's nice. Yeah, yeah. They're a nice side. Um, they're a nice side. <laughs> uh, more, more gave... Lynch too much room. Sicily played him closer, but he was still getting outmarked. And I, th- I think Sicily's a better player than what Ridley is. So if Sicily can't stop him, Ridley's got no chance. Yeah. If our supply is good. And and look, while we're talking about ramp- rampaging forwards, um, at the other end, who's going to stop the rampaging Aaron Francis, boys? Talk to us. <laughs> I feel bad writing some of these things down, but I know we have to talk about matchups because sometimes I don't believe what I've actually written with that. Uh, look, it's possible we can just play five in defense and let him run. I, and, I, and I fully understand that the last two minutes have sounded extremely disrespectful to Essendon, but they've got to understand they're is. playing like shit at the moment. Uh, what worries me as a separate side note is they are copying a lot of heat this week, a lot more than unlike than usual. And this is going to be the back against the walls. This will be their grand final, as a lot of us would like to say. Um, and, and they're going to come out firing. The first 10, 15 minutes is going to be really, really hot footy. And I know we said it off air before the show, but if we can get the first three or four goals quickly and break them, they, they could just collapse into a really big heat. Uh, but in regards to who takes Aaron Francis, uh, Broad of Lawson are probably going to end up being on him at some point. Uh, and just they'll work it out between themselves. But I, I really think our entire defence's mindset is going to be about stopping Peter Wright because I just don't think we have the perfect matchup for him, which could Seriously, play mate. into Francis' hands. He might get off the leash and kick one. Our defence is going to smash their forward line like Republicans smash their cousins. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> That's I, really think, I, I think if we're going to go complete disrespect, let's put the 18 year old kid on him. Oh, Gibkiss will give him a bath, mate. Oh, Gibkiss will be fine. Yeah, size wise. Not. Yeah, no, it, he'll be more about it. The big matchup I'm looking forward to, and someone flagged in here earlier, 
uh, Nank Curvis, I've got Soldo down. I wasn't aware of him being a bit sore. But Nank and Soldo versus Draper, and I think Nick Bryan's their backup ruckman. But I, I rate Draper. Uh, yep. I know looking at the forms and the uh, internet, the Essence supporters have been a bit unhappy with him the last couple of weeks with his output. <laughs> I think he's not taking as many marks as he should. But from a pure workhorse perspective and the aggression and physicality he shows for them is quite uh, substantially better than what Nank's come up against in recent weeks. So I think that's going to be a really big matchup, CB. Um, you know, Nank's in fine form himself, but he's going to be right on, have to be right on top of his game for this one. Draper is a very nat- he's a very good naturally aggressive ruckman, actually rate him. And the last two weeks he's been go- getting the ball out and we'll go these runs through the gut, so... I love watching um, that. He's got some serious like yeah, balls on him to, to 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 take on a few midfielders with a size step. It's good. Yeah, no, no. Like I said, he he's legitimately one we do actually have to respect and stop. So that probably gives him what two players out of the twenty-two in their lineup. But he's definitely one we've got to um, pay attention to. Um, and I guess the other thing as well, like when you look at the Essendon midfield, um, like you know Darcy Parish gets a bit of the ball. Um, we know Dylan Shield is one of the softest footballers since Blamange was invented. <laughs> um, oh. I just their, their midfield is so weak as piss. It's like, vanilla. Oh, Mer- it's not even that. On like paper, vanilla. they got like Andy McGrath and Merritt are reasonable players, but they're just none of them are firing. They're no. one way downhill skiers. They don't. They are not two way runners. That's Thank where you. we can really hurt them. They don't run both ways. They're a lazy midfield. They've had the well, same issue. They've had the same issue since Joe Watson's gone. They don't have anyone that's willing to work at the coalface. The proof in the pudding, and I had to laugh when an Essendon supporter raised this on Twitter. Do you remember in pre-season when um, they were all really hyped up about Rancy joining him and, and the media coverage about Rance winning their time trials in pre-season, how good it was to see him? Upon reflection... Rance winning their time trials wasn't a great thing for that club. When I mean, their own players were meant to be in the 22, well, you know, Stringer ran a 2K time trials. That was a you know a first for him, and that was going to be a Brownlow medal type year for him. But uh, it's, yeah, it's, I, I, I know we've shoot counting a little bit. I think they're going to come out far. I think it's going to be a lot tougher game than what we're probably making it out to be. Um, who stops yeah. who for them? Who stops Dusty? Dusty's getting on a bit of a roll, and we we know Dusty likes big time occasions. This being another one of those, uh, he's going to want to step up to the plate and make a real good fist of this. EJ, oh look, Dusty can do it. I, I, this is going to be disrespectful. There's who's who have they got that can match up on Dusty? That's they a good got point. They got nothing. <laughs> no, I, I can see. Um, Get Cotcher near Shield. That's a great point. Um, I want Slobo Cam. The whole Robbo. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is, is Dusty does what he wants and he goes where he wants. If he wants to play in the midfield, he goes up, he rolls up. If he wants to go on the forward line, he rolls back. They've got no one that can cover both positions. In the midfield, they haven't got a midfield that's anywhere near as good as what he is. And down back, real really, in the first couple of weeks back, he's been able to do pretty much as he pleases against sides that are a lot more highly rated than Essendon. Um, I, I don't know. I've, I've got some names down here, and I can't see anyone that I'd put on him. Yeah, correct. It's going to be interesting. And, Graeme, I, I take your point. Like, it, it sometimes doesn't pay to be cocky, but with the efforts they're dishing out, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see how they're going to improve quickly. Like like I said, I think they're going to be pretty hot to go for the first 10, 15 minutes. If we can weather that storm, I don't know whether they're going to be able to sustain it for four quarters. Um, and you would like to think that our guys are going to be mentally prepared for that full-on assault in the, in the first quarter. But... We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I, I think we probably have been a bit disrespectful and it's probably a little bit sort of, <laughs> don't make me laugh. It's probably, it is probably a little bit, it's probably a little bit too much. It's a pro-Richmond show. If we can't hang yeah, shit know, with a know, shit truck know. team that hangs out but, the bunning shit out in the shitholes in western suburbs of Melbourne, Lord help us, they're trash, garbage. Okay. So, but... but in the same sentence as apologising for being disrespectful, I am going to say this. One of you guys brought up uh, Parrish a minute ago. 
And who, yes. you know, who do we put on Parish? No one. No one. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And this goes back to my stats last week with Jaden Short, right? Jaden Short's number 12 for disposals in the AFL and he's number one for metres gained. Darcy Parrish is number one. He's number 40 for metres gained. Much like Tom Mitchell, he doesn't really hurt you. So if he has 35 disp- possessions, it doesn't matter. If Merritt has 35 possessions or if Shield, actually if Shield has 35 possessions probably helps. If Merritt has 35 possessions, that might be a concern. But Parrish having 35, or if McGrath does, that might be a concern. And you might want to say a, a Graham or a Lambert to have a look at them. But if Parrish has 35, who cares? Yeah. Oh, look, in reality, I think this weekend's game is going to be played out similar, like like last weekend. Hawthorne come out far and <clears throat> stuck it up for a bit. Then we took over. I think the same thing will happen again. But I just think the flip side is if we come on and rattle on four or so goals straight up, um, get your party pants on, boys and girls. It's going to be wild. But does it, wild. Does it, does it worry anyone? Records, you know, they're meant to be broken, so to speak. They've been beaten us since 2014, I think it is. So it's a long time coming. A lot of their fans firmly don't believe that this week will be that week. Um, but it does add a bit of extra fuel to their fire, which is something that I suppose that... Uh, I know, yeah. CB, I'm just no, saying no. that yeah, no. No, If you need the Herald Sun or Hutchie's take to get you fired up for a game of footy, Lord help you. <laughs> Yeah, but we all know that a team can get up for one week. We yeah, We've and if we're and, and if you're ten percent off, yeah. and they're up, it can spell yeah. trouble. Yeah, that, and that but, is uh, that is uh, no, but that is, <laughs> no, but that that is the concern. I mean, and the thing is, if if they do get off to a flyer, and they get their tails up and they go bang, 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 much like against Hawthorne, sometimes that wave can just keep sweeping you forward. So we can't afford to go in complacent. But, yeah, if we're legitimate about playing finals this year, this is a game we need to put in a work life performance and get the job done without too much hassle. Oh, and keep yeah, this I'm in mind, just... we, we've still got top four aspirations. We smoke these, Do you reckon these, that's buddy? still within reach? Do you reckon, that's, yes. do you reckon top four is still in, yeah. on the cards? Absolutely. Have a look at the ladder. Yeah. Absolutely. So um... there's three teams that are going to finish top four. The fourth spot is up for grabs. Hundred percent, and this game will hopefully put us a a game and a half to two games inside the eight. So it's equally as important on that front to create some separation. Correct. Correct. All right, we'll get a tip, including margin. I'm scared for CB, so I'll leave him to the last. Uh, EJ, what what are you going with? And viewers, make sure you put in your tips and margin as well. We'll put we'll put a few. Um, uh, I agree with Darren a bit here. Uh, when you said a minute ago a workmanlike performance, I think with Essendon, I don't think it can afford to be a workmanlike performance. I think come the end of the year, I think percentage is going to be important. And I think we need a big win here. We need to break them. Uh, I'm going Richmond by 48 points. Strong. I'll Strong s- start. I'll say Richmond by 31, which must uh, be discussed, I'm thinking, SCP, to uh, round us out. He's going to go higher than 48 just to prove a point. If we can't beat these rabble pricks by about 88 points, I'm microwaving my membership. Oh. Fair income. Now, they, they, they haven't been this low for years. This is the time to kick the shit out of this arrogant pack of pricks and absolutely sink the slip room. So, Tom Lynch, if you're listening, mate, pull your finger out of your ass. We need double digits from you, big boy. Let's go. Ten snags. 88. 10 snags. Yeah, we'll take 10 snags. All right, well, that's it for tonight. Actually, score, actually t- hey, let's place a bet. Could Tom Lynch outscore Essendon on his own? Oh, 100% he could. If he gets the delivery and is on the move and we break oh. their confidence in the first quarter, it could get real ugly really quickly. Just, just when you think we can't disrespect them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if it happens. Uh, pin that, yeah, we'll pin that. You get, uh, the, you, you get the flog Stradamus for the year if that happens. Correct. So, one one the before. game is on Saturday night, Richmond versus Essendon at the MCG, 7.30pm. Make sure you do get there early for um, all, all the pre-game 
rituals. It's always a, a great occasion to celebrate the SDNR round. Uh, all the teams do a fantastic job of uh, all the, the jerseys uh, and the stories their players tell. It's fantastic and it's good to see so much support. Uh, apologies again with Phil's internet connection. We promise we will get him back on. Apologies for the, I suppose, the choppiness at the start of the show. We were very hopeful that it would fix itself, but uh, we will try and get Phil on next week. Um, and as an extra bit of uh, a bonus for everyone, Matthew White will be joining us in a couple of weeks. Uh, and I believe he was tuning in tonight. So hello, Matthew, if you're if you're listening. Um, so looking forward to getting Matty White up for a chat in a, in a couple of weeks. And Phil, hopefully on Monday night, he's, he said he's going to go down to a nearby suburb to get some better internet connection for us. He is looking forward to, to having a chat to us all. Uh, we can't wait to get him back on too. So thank you so much, CB and EJ, for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, helping with the preview and um, in the review, CB. You did well. Just took charge. Destroy these pricks Saturday night. Destroy them. Destroy them. Justice for Marlon. Oh, we'll do a quick around the room. Is Marlon going to stay suspended or will he be freed up? Free. 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 I, I think you'll get free. Oh, I want him to be free because I, I really don't think it hit him that hard in the head, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm sure Twitter will tell us very soon uh, what the outcome is of that one. So thanks to everyone for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Twitch, whatever platform you're on, get behind us. And we will speak to you all next Monday, hopefully with, with Phil again. Uh, if not, we will announce when that comes on. So have a good night, everybody. And until next time, go Tigers. Go Tigers. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye.